Okay, so in this video, I'm going to show you how to mine Ethereum on Windows. Now, this is what I personally do, but there are other options when it comes to the miner program, your Ether wallet, and the pool to use. Now, I have a list of all the other options in my Discord, so definitely join if you want to check that out. So, thanks for tuning in. This is the life of miner. Okay, so how to mine Ethereum. So first things first, this is assuming you have your rig all set up and you're ready to start mining. Now everything in this video is what I personally do to mine Ethereum on Windows. I'm gonna show you what wallet I use, what pool I use, and what miner program I'm using. Now I'm also gonna do a little bit of overclocking, but the overclocking is depending on the GPU. But check out my other videos where I'll go over everything in more details. So first you wanna grab an Ethereum wallet to store your Ethereum. Now there are many types of wallets out there with different use cases, but I personally use my Ether wallet, which is an online wallet. So now checking out my Ether wallet. Now make sure you do choose the right website because there could be other fake or scam websites out there. Now once on the main page, you can either create a new wallet or access my wallet. But as of right now, we don't have a wallet, so let's create a new wallet. So let's click here. Now there are three ways you can create a wallet on my Ether wallet. You can either do it through their app. You can either do it by key store file, or you can do it by a monomic phrase. Now I would highly recommend the app if you want something simple, fast and secure. But the problem with this is you do need to download it through some sort of app store or the Google Play Store. And it can only be accessed through the app. But if you do want to access your wallet through your computer, you either want to do by key store file or by monomic phrase. But for this example, let's go ahead and do by key store file. Now it's highly recommended to create a key store file offline due to security. But first let's go ahead and create a password. So I'm gonna go show you the password because this is gonna be an example wallet. So let's go ahead and put the life of a miner. Then go ahead and click on next. Now the thing about a key store file is make sure you do not lose it. If you lose this key store file, your wallet is gonna be gone forever. So it's highly recommended to create a backup and store it somewhere safe. And no matter what, do not share or give out your key store file to anyone. If you ever give out your key store file, more than likely your funds will be stolen. So let's scroll down a little and click on download key store file. Okay, so once you download the key store file, it'll say UTC, the date, and a bunch of numbers. So you need this to access your wallet through my Ether wallet. So now going back to the website, and now if you didn't want to access your wallet, you want to go ahead and now click on access my wallet. Now there are several ways to access your wallet, but since we did the key store file, it's going to be the software. So go ahead and click on this. Then you want to click on key store file, and then click on continue, and then go ahead and locate the key store file. So you wanna go ahead and double click on your key store file, which is right here. And then you wanna go ahead and now put in your password. And of course my password was the life of a miner. Then you wanna go ahead and access your wallet. And there you go, this is your online wallet that you just created through Mew. Now the most important thing here is your Ethereum address, which is up here. And this is basically how you receive Ethereum. So make sure you copy this and save this somewhere safe. And you can share this information with other people if they want to send you some Ethereum. So let's go ahead and copy this down. And just a quick overview of this website. This is of course your address. This is your Ethereum balance and you can send transactions. So you can either click here or click here. And if you did want to send Ethereum, you can go ahead and put in the amount and put in their address and adjust the fees and go ahead and hit send transaction. You can also directly swap some coins to BTC as well. But there you have it. This is the Ethereum wallet I personally use to store my Ethereum. So next you need to choose a pool to mine Ethereum. Now there are a lot of Ethereum pools out there and you can even solo mine, but solo mining is not recommended. Now I personally use ethermine.org for my pool to mine Ethereum. Okay, so now check out this site right here where it says miner address. Go ahead and put your Ethereum address that you created when you created your Ethereum wallet. And then let's go ahead and search. Now this is the place where you'll check if your miners are working. So I recommend saving this page. Then next you do wanna go ahead and click on start mining. And this is the information you'll need to add to your miner program to start mining. So depending on where you're located, you wanna either use the Asia, Europe, or the US server. And for the port number, I like to use the SSL port, which is 5555. And next I do wanna mention is that your pool determines when you get paid out. So for ethermine.org, you can set your minimum payout to 0.05 Ethereum, or you will automatically get paid out once a week if you mine more than 0.01 Ethereum. But depending on the pool, definitely check out your pool's payout policy to know when you'll be paid out. But let's go ahead and now download the miner program. So next step is to choose and download a miner program. Now I personally use Phoenix Miner, but there are other options out there that may have better results. It just comes down to personal preference. Okay, so in order to download Phoenix Miner, make sure you go to the bitcointalk.org website. And then on the main page, you wanna scroll down a little bit until you see quick start, and it says you can download Phoenix Miner 5.4C from here and then click here. 
it's going to bring up this page and then you want to scroll down until you see phoenix miner underscore 5.4 c underscore windows and double click this now while it's downloading it may show up as a virus but that is okay majority of the minor programs will show up as a virus so on the bottom it did detect it as a virus so on the bottom right you'll see it show all go ahead and click on that and then go ahead and click on keep dangerous file and then keep anyway and there you have it that's basically how you download phoenix miner on windows okay so once you download phoenix miner it'll create a zip folder but before you extract this zip folder let's go ahead and create another folder where your windows defender can't scan anything in this folder so first you want to do is right click click on new and then click on folder and let's just name this miner program and then the next thing you want to do is just go ahead and search windows security right here It'll bring up this page, then go ahead and click on virus and threat protection. And then what you want to do is scroll all the way down until you see virus and threat protection settings, and then click on manage settings right here. Then once you're on this page, you want to scroll down until you see exclusions, and then you want to add or remove exclusions. So click on this, and then you want to go ahead and, and then add an exclusion. And then you click on folder, and then you want to go ahead and find the folder you just created to exclude Windows Defender, and then select folder. And then you may get a Windows alert. Go ahead and accept that Windows alert. And then over here, you'll see that your folder has been added to the exclusion. Okay, so once you create the exclusion folder, let's go ahead and extract Phoenix Miner from the zip folder. Now, the easiest way to extract this folder is just to click on the folder and drag it to the other exclusion folder you created, like so. And then once you click on the exclusion folder you created, you'll see Phoenix Miner right here. Double click this, and then you wanna go ahead and find the bat file where you can start mining Ethereum, which is right here start underscore minor dot bat you want to go ahead and then right click click on edit and then once you click on edit this notepad will pop up and this is where you want to make adjustments to your bat file to mine ethereum so first you want to change your wallet address which is right here to the ethereum address you created when you created your ethereum wallet and then next you can change the name of your rig and next but not least you can then change the pool server and since i'm in the us i do want to change this to us1 but if you're in the eu you can go ahead and just keep this so i did go ahead and change the first pool to us1 and then for the backup pool let's go ahead and change this to us2 and for the port number let's keep it at 5555 now i do want to mention that you can add more commands to your bat file to fine tune your minor program but i'll go over that in more details in a different video once you save the bat file what i like to do is then create a shortcut and then put that shortcut where it's easy to access okay so now let's go ahead and start phoenix miner and check this out Okay, so now running Phoenix Miner for a while, you are now mining Ethereum, and you can always check your hash rate on the pool side as well. Now I do want to mention that I do have the RTX 3080 in my test bench, and the hash rates seem a lot lower than usual. It's because I'm using OBS to record my desktop screen, and that is affecting the hash rates. Okay, last but not least, let's go over overclocking. Now overclocking can be very easy or very difficult depending on the graphics card, but the overclock tool I personally use is called MSI Afterburner. Now overclocking is highly recommended to be more efficient when mining. Okay, so now pulling up MSI Afterburner, let's overclock our GPU to mine Ethereum. Now when it comes to mining Ethereum, you ideally want to increase the memory and decrease the power in or the core. But every card is different, so it's best to test each card individually. Okay, so now if you check out my Discord, I'll have a list of overclock settings for each GPUs. Now just be aware that my overclock settings may not work with your GPUs. Every GPU is different in its silicon lottery. So if your GPU starts crashing, you want to lower your overclock settings. Alright, so thanks for checking out my guide on how to mine Ethereum on Windows. Hopefully this helps. And check out my other videos where I go over everything in more details. And if you do want to ask me any questions live, I do stream live on Twitch at twitch.tv slash the life miner every Sunday 2.30 p.m. US Eastern Time. And if you do need any type of help, definitely join the Discord. I or someone knowledgeable will definitely help you out. Okay, so hope you enjoyed this video. Thumbs if you enjoyed it. So I'm excited to see what's next. But of course, thanks for watching and always happy mining. Thanks for watching the life of a miner. This is Gohan from Dragon Ball Z. You don't want me to get angry and turn Super Saiyan, so make sure you subscribe to the life of a miner. I'm also the narrator. Next time on the life of a miner.